My next guest plays Catherine Janeway, the Starfleet captain on Star Trek Voyager. Please welcome to our show, Kate Mulgrew. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. Thanks for coming. I always watch this in such amazement. Watch what? It's TV a very show? hard job that you have. What, this job? Piece yes. of cake. Talk show host? Very hard. They put these clothes on us. Andy and I come out here, babble for an hour, and the checks keep coming. <laughs> so modest, but you're very charming. Oh, well, thank you that very much. That was not a legitimate staring contest. Why? You're an Irish Catholic boy. That's right. And I'm an Irish Catholic girl. Mm. I'm one of eight. How many <laughs> siblings no do more. you have? What? How many siblings do you uh, have? There are six kids in my family. And I have eight. We grew up for high stakes and played that game. No gags in the background. Really? You guys would I take would it seriously? I would put a $100 bill on this table right now. Really? I would give you a two-minute time limit, and I would win. Well... Anybody from the audience can do anything they want. Mm -hmm. Anything. For okay. two minutes. Really? And I will win. Won't this sort of hurt the talking segment? <laughs> it might be a little detrimental, but that could be a plus code. Oh, okay. Well, do you have a hundred bucks on you? I'm gonna could you lend me a hundred and I'll give you a No way! Forget it! I don't have a hundred bucks. Didn't you play it when you were I said a boy. the checks keep coming, but they're not big checks. <laughs> I get like $18 a week. Do you? Yeah. Uh, you're well dressed. For <laughs> nice Thank guy. you. This is one piece. It zips up the back. <laughs> now, you know, Kathleen Turner said uh, that. What an she, interesting woman she is. She's a fascinating woman. And she said, actually, during the commercial break, she said, I'd love to stick around because she had to run. She said, I want to stick around because I want to do a Whose Voice is Lower with Kate Mulgrew. She said that, actually. No, it's her voice is. She said, speaking like this, her voice is considerably lower. But you have a great voice, too. You have a fantastic voice. My voice has been the subject of much controversy this year, and I'm not kidding. What do you mean, controversy? A lot of people uh, were very concerned about my voice, possibly as the, uh, the captain. Now it's resonating in a very peculiar way. That's an echo in this chamber. Uh, uh, what, what do you mean, people like fans of I the had show? Men, I think, what do they, they print it in, they punch it into the internet, said she sounds like a cross between a munchkin and a sort of uh, Catherine Hepburn on speed. Really? People on the internet said that? Some guy on the internet. Those vicious nerds. Well, Absolutely. How could they do that to you? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> really? And you don't, but you don't take that personally? You, you know, you forge I try ahead. Not. Well, I try not to take that too. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, okay, but, <laughs> but, but on the subject, uh, while we're on Are the subject. Are you kidding? That's a terrible blow. I know, a it's a terrible thing to Catherine say. and Catherine Everett on speed? <laughs> and I'm trying to run a starship? <laughs> Oh, really? It hurts with the commands, Please. I guess. Yeah. Sort of a full speed ahead, let's go. <laughs> We're powering. And the bun didn't help either, let me tell you. <laughs> Scotty, give me more power. I know there's no Scotty on your show. No more but, Scotty. Mm, God bless his soul. Uh, now, what makes you qualified, though? While we're on the subject, what makes you qualified to be a, a, a starship captain? Then? I think it harkens back to my youth. I was the oldest. The oldest? You were the oldest of I eight? I was the oldest girl, the second oldest of eight. Mm -hmm. Bossy. A surrogate mother. I had to do a lot for my mother. Mm -hmm. She used to make me run in and check all the cribs, see if they were breathing. That's a fun chore. It was great fun. <laughs> and that's basically what I do on the ship. Uh, <laughs> um, check on everyone, see they're breathing. Uh -huh. I think it's just an inherent quality. You think, uh, really, well, that's interesting. You think birth order is that important because I'm the middle of six. Uh, somebody told me. You yeah, I was the middle child, fighting for attention, screaming for love. The only way I could get it was to get my own TV show. Constantly. <laughs> Is this freaking people out? Uh, but, uh, but, but it's interesting, birth order, they say, is very important. And you were the oldest, which means that you were in charge. You were... Yeah, I think we're empowered, but we're also probably... I'm sorry, this microphone is right in the middle of my... Where is your microphone? That's... <laughs> um, I was empowered by my mother, but I think you also get a little demented about the whole thing. Eight children is a lot of children. That doesn't happen anymore. I mean, the, it used to, Irish Catholic families used what to have like nine it? kids, 12 kids. Yeah. I knew a family that lived not too far from my family. They had like 14 kids in the I family. I know, the Duckies were 16, the O'Rourke's were 18, it was nothing. I know, kids were like meeting each other for the first time, you know, brothers and sisters <laughs> were like getting together at the bathroom. It was crazy. No, there's only like four of us. Four See, of, he's, yeah. you're German though, right? Yeah, German, ah, Swedish. German, German, Swedish, the you guys Germans are making are very, very clocks. smart. Right. Yeah. yeah, my folks didn't get along much anyway. They <laughs> had separate, uh, well, you don't want to know. Welcome to Late Night Therapy, everybody. <laughs>
There's a couch right here. We'll get started. This is helpful. I don't know what I think about the large family. I'm proud to be a member of it. But it's gone. It's not going to happen anymore. I'm not going to meet a woman who's going to let you have 11 Ireland children. Lately? You know, they're still doing it in Ireland? They're still having 11, 15 kids? They're still kids? doing something, yes. <laughs> they're still doing something. Oh, I guess. I spent the summer there last year, and nothing changes. Really? And I'm always fascinated. I say, you're such strict Roman Catholics, which I applaud and mm -hmm. I admire. Mm -hmm. And yet there must be a great deal of sexual activity. I think when you, there are 18 kids, yeah, something's going on, yeah. Something is definitely going on. I mean, I'm no scientist. But they won't <laughs> discuss it, and they get very incensed Oh, no, about no, it. Catholics can't. I won't be talking to you about that, dear. No, that's not what, Catholics you know? can't talk about sex. Yeah, I have women all the time come on the show, and they start to talk about sex, and they're coming on to me. It's an occupational hazard. And uh, <laughs> I can't handle it. It's happened once. Okay, it never happened. Are you married? But anyway, huh? Are no, I'm married? not married. Do no. you have a girlfriend? Yes, I do. Is it good? Yes, I am very happy with my girlfriend. Really? Is what good? Your relationship with your girlfriend. Oh, yeah. I think some people misinterpreted it when you said, is it good? No, I think no, some nobody people misinterpreted it. Yeah, there was nobody a guy. Did. There was a guy who was thinking it. I think somebody misinterpreted I thought. Well, would you say you're in love? Oh, no, it's not talk. I will not talk about my private life on the show. I'm Irish Catholic. I can't do it. But now he's going to turn it. Yeah, let's talk about your personal life. Are you in love? <laughs> I am in love, yes. Really? That's mm -hmm. good for you. Who yes, is this person? It is good for me. Uh, he's a, a bit of an enigma. You see me, I'm getting a little nervous about this. You see, it's it. not easy. <laughs> yes, it's hard. It's hard oh, because I'm the... old. You're not old. Um, I'm too old, really, to discuss my private life. You're not old. When I was younger, I was much freer about it. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happier than I've ever been before. Well, that's very nice. Life. That's a very yeah. nice thing and to be able to say. And he is a contributing factor, a large contributing factor. Oh, well, that's a nice thing to be able to say. Yeah. But I think love is I, very I think that's would be a funny Hallmark card. I'm very happy, and you are a large contributing factor. <laughs> And I wrote they, it. <laughs> they have them. They, if they don't have it now, they should have it. Uh, now, I, I, I heard that you were on the subject of Irish and, and Irish people and Irish culture and Irish lore, that you can do an Irish jig. Is that true? Oh, please. Frank Smiley will... I, he, Frank Smiley has been berating me back. Frank Smiley, I should explain to people at home, is an idiot who works on our show. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> his job... <laughs> he's right over there. His, yeah. hey, <laughs> anyway, Frank's job is to badger, is to badger the talent, the guests that come on the show into doing things they don't want to do and make them miserable. Is that well, true? Well, I thought it was pretty remarkable. We had a 45-minute conversation. This is a pre-interview, right? An That's hour what, you and know a what half I love? long. You know what I love is this is what Frank tells me. Uh, oh, yeah, she wants to do the jig. Go ahead. <laughs> I know. You did, too, Frank, didn't you? Frank, He'll didn't never you? work again. No, he didn't say that. In fairness... In fairness to he Frank. He greeted me at the door with the Kaylee shoes. He says, the band's got the jig. You gotta do it. You gotta execute you don't, it or no, it's my no, job. No, 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 he didn't say that. In fairness, Frank Smiley said to me, she's not sure about doing the jig. You could try and coax her into doing the jig. No, and no. the audience can hoot and cheer and there'll be this incredible pressure to do the jig. I'm not doing the jig. Okay. There you go. All right, all right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, we have a policy on this show, though. It's only fair, if the guest won't do the jig, I will do the jig. Oh, good. It's no good, I know it's gonna, it's gonna be crappy, but Max, just, I'll do the jig. Kate Mulgrew doesn't have to do it, and that way, uh, other talented people watching right now won't be afraid to come on the show. <laughs> come on, join me at least. No. What is he doing? Is that how you do it? No. That's very good. Hands down. Was my jig so bad? We'll take a break. We'll be right back with the suits. We'll see you in a second. That's our show for the night. 
I want to thank all my guests. Kate Mulgrew, it was really nice thank to meet you. you. And thanks for the jig. My thanks to Kathleen Turner. My thanks to the Suits for performing. Of course, Andy Richter of the Max Weinberg 7. Stay tuned for later with Greg Kinnear. Greg's guest tonight is Michael Feinstein. Good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.